G'day and welcome to a survival video. Um, this is my mining truck. The reason to make this particular video is um, I've worked out that refiners don't do load balancing. So what I mean by that is if we call this a resource container 1, if it gets some resources, let's say 4 or 5, the refiners will grab those and start processing it. As we mine, obviously we're going to collect more resources in both of the containers. And what's going to happen is container 1 will continually be, act, be processed by both of them until it is fully empty. But what that means is if we're still mining, this container, container 2, can fill up to the point where it's no longer you know, able to take any more resource. And the refiners will keep on processing this first container until it is fully empty. So um, from a mining point of view, if you want to collect, if I want to collect up the width of the truck, I need to process container two and container one at the same time, not one or the other. Um, a process that I have worked out for resetting the, um, the lock of the refiner onto the resource container is to use a piston and drag the resource, the refiner backwards off the truck with a piston and a, and a rod from a guide point of view and um, it wasn't very successful at all. It did work correctly in resetting the uh, refining lock on the resource container except the mass of the machine sliding backwards um, come out behind the rear axle and basically upset the balance of the machine and all of the movement um, basically caused floppy uh, bearing syndrome and uh, everything went floppy and you couldn't mine anymore. Um, and then you know had to put it all on a lift and all that sort of stuff to reset it all. Um, so yeah, just some quick features. Of my um, drill heads are all at a staggered distance. Um, that's on a rotating arm. I'll explain that in a second. Um, and I've got just the the, the the heads. Now this center head up the top. Uh, I'll jump down here. The one up the top um, behaves like a grinder for a conveyor line. So I'll just jump into the chair and fire up the drills. What I mean like a conveyor line is anything that falls on top of the drill head um, will actually get pushed towards the center drill and backwards. Um, I, can, I can process the resource nodes with uh, skid steer left and right. And what that means is I can actually bulldoze all the, the resources into the, towards the center and process them uh, quite hard and quite aggressively. And uh, yes, two refiners running on two collectors is too slow. I've actually um, managed to fill them uh, once or twice. And that's why we're talking about doing a bit of a load balancing is so I can um, collect at the full width of the truck while I'm driving around. Um, I have actually been able to get myself on top of a hill with a resource node and just use gravity and the scrap mechanic the slidey tires situation and just process a line straight through the entire thing without touching anything apart from the have the grinders running and the head tilted to the ground. Um, so that's what that's all about. So um, yeah, this video, yeah, hopefully before I take everything apart, um, is to sort of highlight um, the machine as it is because it's all going to be redesigned because I need to get access to some of the stuff. So uh, from a features point of view, um, got the up down head, got the spinning drill heads. Uh, five and six from a switch point of view uh, control the um, the skid steering and I realized one of them's back to the front so I have to fix up that. I did actually take all the tires off and remove suspension because that was causing problems as well just to try and get some speed. Uh, so there is some logic on board um, which is controlled by the seat steering. Um, this part here is actually an arm which is connected to the gas engine which is connected to the seat. So as I accelerate this bar creates more push power and then will trigger the sensor to drive the truck forward. It's like a turbocharge while I'm running. So I actually have a fairly modest electric engine running for forward and reverse and then I've got another set quite aggressive for power while I'm driving. And because they're associated to the skid steer system, um, this sensor here is connected to the steering so I can actually switch off um, one either side of the turbocharged um, electric engine and that will uh, slow that side which means while we're on freeway speeds we actually have a, a kind of a nice slow control turn and then when we're mining uh, with the button impulse I actually have a left and right uh, skid steer. 
So yeah, I'm going to take this apart, um, work out some mechanism of um, moving the resource containers. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to use a bearing uh, crane lift rotation sort of um, situation to, to do it because um, I've got to move it five uh, five blocks. Um, I actually don't even know how far that is. One, three, four, five. Ooh, maybe a bearing on this corner. Mm, I might just have to put it just a little bit further out, like there. All right, I'll have to work on it. Um, yeah, catch you guys as soon as I got the um, the mechanism for, sorted out. Oh, and tr cruising around for cook cook pot um, while I'm mining is every time I leave the seat, I cook a, a burger and um, collect it. Uh, so that way, I've been slowly collecting up my um, my food resource while I've been driving around, and I also run around for trailer with a refiner on it. It's just set to really basic. It doesn't have any upgrades on it. Um, so basically what I'll do is I get whatever resource, um, so for example, uh, scrap timber, I'd move across to the chest and then I can process the scrap timber into, um, into uh, hardwood. Uh, but at the case, at the moment, I'm processing sand uh, for glass. Um, and then when I go and raid the um, ember forest, I load up the embers into the machine as well and process glass while I'm going. So that way I've got plenty of resources when I get back to my um, uh, headquarters. Yep, so it's getting dark. I'll get on with the uh, mods to my machine and see you guys in a minute. Uh, g'day and welcome back. Uh, it's daytime and I've done a few iterations of different designs and this is what I've come up with. Um, the uh, pistons um, moving forward over the top of the, the um, drill heads didn't work at all. I also tried to use a bearing on the corner of the um, machine and that's the distance they have to be away from refiners if they're set, sitting in the bed of the truck. So I'll just put one in. So at the moment that refiner can't reach um, either of the, the chests. Um, but let's say for instance it was trying to refine the left hand side. Um, I could raise the left hand side, that would break the lock for this refiner and then bring it back down. Um, and that way I can swing the, um, the active um, container. So um, yeah, so that, this is a solution I've come up with, raising it with a piston. Um, in my case this piston is uh, 12 long, so that's a fair way to bring it up out of the way. Um, and then when they're down, they get um, harvested straight away. So one harvested one, one harvested the other. And then the mining height is then back to um, what I was using previously. Um, yeah, so now I've got to put all the logic of my um, turbo uh, function for my electric engines back together um, because I've now lost space at the front of the truck. Uh, I don't want to go under for ground clearance purposes and I've already put everything pretty close to where the refiners are so um, it's going to take a little bit of work. Um, so I'm not sure where I got to on another video, I'll, I'll go through it. Um, I've got a normal um, engine connected to the seat. I also have a gas engine with gas in it connected to the seat and this one becomes my turbo control. Uh, with a fully upgraded seat you can add more than one engine to it and I put that on a bearing and two sensors, one for forward, one for reverse, and then that engages the electric engines which are set to the sides and they're actually quite high. Now these electric engines are also used for my skid steer um, functionality so they can uh, rotate the chassis on their own. Um, so I use that a lot while I'm mining, nice little handy thing so that's why there's a bit of logic kicking around so that the, the, the engines have multi-function when they're, when they're up and running. And this last one is just a torque control engine. Um, yeah, I've got to work out how I'm going to fit it in. Because what I need to look at is... Um, I might fit it here. Because these now race straight up and down. I've got space. I'll put a um, refiner in and see how we go. Um, I'll show you guys what the turbo uh, function looks like when I've got it finished. Thanks, catch you later. Troubleshooting, I've got myself all worked out um, what was happening with the turbo section. Um, I was um, 
overshooting the sensor so I've actually put a stopper block so that works now pretty good and then the speed difference between my main engine and my skid steer engines was too low so it was um, you couldn't notice the turn effect so um, the turn mechanism is the logic gates um, immediately to the right of the seat down on the ground and then got the throttle control at the rear so when I put us to a steering mode you see the, the arm move so we're going to try and attempt a high speed uh, left hand turn so it fires up and the right hand engine is on but you can see our turn speed is really slow it's not very fast and that's because of the difference in engine speeds so this is us in turbo mode and then we can slow down and we can crawl along and you can see that throttle bar at the back um, you know, it hits the turbo um, function a little bit like a little bit after I press the button so it gives us control and then when we're mining we've got um, good action for skid steering through a, a node um, and that's quite a good aggressive um, drill so anyway thank you um, I'll get myself find a node and we'll get get some cr um, crunching going and we'll see if we can get these load balancing um, pods uh, fired up as well uh, <clears throat> I'm getting ready to uh, craft up a batch of batteries so this is why I keep my glowies on the chemical pond is that um, the chest uh, can be filled with chemicals um, and I can put the glow uh, in it and that's ready to go for batteries just need some um, scrap metal for it so I've got it in this little broken uh, panel so uh, yeah I'll get some bat batteries charged up fill up the truck and we'll go mining see how uh, g'day, I've found uh, two rock nodes here on flat ground so I can be a bit lazy and I can talk to you guys while I mine it. Um, I'll fire up my mining head and I'll just use my skid steer um, to, to line myself up for the, the uh, rock so you can see how that gets um, become very useful. And then um, you can see as the stones fall on top of the drills, the centre drill at the top um, becomes uh, like a, um, a, a, a conveyor belt for um, processing the stone. You see there we've got a piece jammed on the top which actually got moved towards the center to be, to be cut down. Uh, yeah, so the um, mechanism for mining on my truck is not about oscillating heads or up and down heads like I have on other builds. Um, it's about just using the entire truck to shuffle left and right to get in and chop down everything um, in short order. Um, I'm just taking my time here while I'm talking to you guys on the phone so I can see what's going on. Uh, but you can see that it's um, pretty efficient in getting all the way down to the, the, um, the stone on the ground uh, with minimal effort on my part and um, you know, it just gets in, gets the job done. You know, stay in that straight line, just get it all processed in one pass you know, as much as possible. And then what I'll do is I'll line up for a second run and um, get the rest of it. Um, so here you can see that that one side um, container is filled up compared to the other one, um, just by virtue of what was where when we were mining. So that's where that um, adjustment for, um, I'm just trying to pick up the, the um, timber on the ground so it can flood one of the containers. Um, so you can see that the, the processing at the moment is on the right hand side um, so that left hand side would eventually uh, fill up and um, so the use of the the um, thing I could take this container out of operation um, so the refiners will switch to the other one and then when we bring it back in um, you know it's gonna it's gonna fill up and get um, get caught but um, yeah so it's that whole uh, able to do some load balancing while we're mining um, to get the entire width of the truck um, sucking up resources um, and you can see that even with two refiners that rock node was pretty much finished and I wasn't even paying attention so um, yeah if I get a better run at it so those resources that are on the ground there I'll just um, reline myself up and start it I'll go to go the bottom side spin into position and just come back up through it all. Now the um, the uh, front head um, behaves like a bulldozer sometimes, I won't say all the time. This is scrap mechanic, everything, everything changes depending on what you're doing. 
and where it is and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice and fun, fairly fast um, mining machine. I've seen other people's builds for zero turns and that sort of stuff. Um, and you can see here, with all the resources here on the ground, if I started mining on the other node, um, you know, we'd, we'd, be, we'd be full uh, of, of the containers. So that's where the, the um, being able to control where the processing goes, um, you know, for this last level of cleanup uh, is really useful, really handy for me. Um, the tree I had manually chopped down with an axe just to give us better camera work. Um, so, and here's the other mode. And you know, if I if I break into this one, I'm, going, I'm not going to be able to process it. I have to wait for the refiners to catch up. And that was um, just you know, fairly simple um, mining work without going overboard. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, as you can see, I do enjoy this miner. Um, it is good fun for me. Um, I can collect up the resources really fast, and the um, the tank steering um, makes a big difference um, of getting the resource chopped down and being able to get it to be right in front of your truck all the time, so you can actually catch those nodes, the um, the resources straight away. Um, you know, I've got a little bit at the outside of the mining reach on each side as we go um, through this node. Um, and then sometimes if you know if I'm feeling like it, just give it a good hard run and just get in and just keep the engine on full power and just press my way in um, and it um, destroys it all pretty quick. So you can see there our um, resource container on the left side is full. So what we need to do is break the the refiner's reach on, on, the, on that one, wait for the resource to get taken up, which it's done. There you go, two will be processed. So now we can lower that back into uh, service and we're good to good to go again. So both of them can collect up. Um, but you can see we don't have any spaces left. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. I'll get this one um, up and you guys can um, see that uh, there is different designs out there. Don't use pistons don't, that don't need suspension, don't need um, any of that sort of work to be effective. Um, you know, this is not the best, not the fastest, but it is uh, lag friendly, um, which is the most important part. So I can get in quickly uh, and get in and chop down as much stuff as possible with as minimum lag as possible and re reduce that uh, floppy bearing situation that you get. Um, so yeah, I'll process this, get it done. And um, yeah, see you guys uh, on the next video.